Merry Christmas, everyone. My name is Cambria Tortorelli, and I am the Parish Life Director at Holy Family. I am delighted to welcome you to our live stream Mass today as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. In a normal year, I would be looking out at the hundreds of you who would be present at each of our 10 Masses taking place throughout Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. While we're unable to be physically present to one another this year, the warmth of our Holy Family welcome to each and every one of you is no less heartfelt. I suspect that many of you may be visiting Holy Family for the first time, and so I extend to you an especially warm welcome. If you live near enough, please come and visit us when we begin in-person Masses again. We are a community of faith that welcomes every person, regardless of their state or stage of life. This means that we welcome Catholics and non-Catholics, people of faith or no faith. We welcome those who are married or single, divorced or separated. We welcome you if you are straight or a member of the LGBTQIA community. We welcome you regardless of whether you are black, brown, white, or multiracial, or if you are poor or rich or somewhere in between. We welcome those of you with disabilities and those of you who are non-disabled. We hope that even virtually, you will feel how loved you are by Jesus Christ and how welcome you are into our community. If there is anything that we can do to support you spiritually, emotionally, or in a more practical way during these tough times, please reach out to me or one of our priests or lay ministers. We are always here for you. On behalf of all of us at Holy Family, we wish you and your family a Christmas filled with the peace and joy of the Christ child. Have a merry and a safe Christmas. Good morning and Merry Christmas. We are so happy to have you join us here in our celebration. Please lift your voices in singing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Today is a day of welcome. It's a day of celebration. It's a day of connection with the birth of Jesus Christ into our humanity. How God becomes one with us and in so doing takes on all the infirmities and limitations of the human condition, like us in all things but sin, we are reminded by St. Paul. So feel the welcoming and the belonging and the gathering of a living church 
as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Pause with me for a moment of prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of love, Father of all, the darkness that covered the earth has given way to the bright dawn of your word made flesh. Make us a people of light. Make us faithful to your word that we may bring your life to a waiting world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Let us listen now to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> the people who walked in darkness 
have seen a great light upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as a fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by justice and judgment, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temporarily, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And so all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. He went to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping night watch over their flocks. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for you and for all people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, the one who is Christ, and Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God on the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Today is a day of teaching. It's a day of revelation. I'd like to call you to reflect with me on a particular meaning which we might find in our celebration of the birth of our Messiah, our Lord and Savior. In the Hasidic tradition, this story is told. The student comes to the rabbi, and he said, Master, I have been studying the Torah. I have prayed over it. I have reflected on every word in the Torah, and yet I can't seem to find the meaning. And the master said, my son, the meaning is not in the words. The meaning is to be found in the spaces between the words. That's where life is lived. Words come easily, 
That's not life. Life is what happens in the spaces between the words. That's true for every one of us. We express all sorts of greetings and blessings and caring for one another during the time of Christmas, and yet it's an empty echo unless we have meaning in the spaces between the words. That's where life is lived, and that's where life is experienced. So let me reflect on how this might have meaning for us on Christmas Day. For many, many years, I've considered myself a pilgrim. In my whole journey in the spiritual life, I am a pilgrim. A pilgrim is somebody who is searching for something more, something deeper, something more profound, something more enlightened. And the pilgrim is always walking into the unknown. That's the whole nature of a pilgrimage. The pilgrimage is a journey in faith into a space which you have not experienced before, into an experience which is not familiar to you, something new, fresh, some, a vision, a dream, a hope, a prayer that you have. The pilgrim is not somebody who is empty or impoverished. The pilgrim is full of faith, deeply believing that in the journey of life, in the pilgrimage of life, God is present and God speaks and God reveals. So life becomes a pilgrimage, a search for something deeper. Now, I have found this in my own life. I have traveled half the world on pilgrimages. I've gone to the tomb of Peter in Rome many, many times. I've gone to Lourdes, to Medjugorje. I've been to Tepeyac, San Giovanni Rotondo to see Padre Pio. And I've gone to Bethlehem many, many times, countless times, all in a search, a search for something deeper and more profound and more meaningful, something, a grace, which will enrich my life. It's a search. Life is that way. The journey is to look for something yet unseen. Something new, fresh. I've gone retreat every year for most of my life, and I'm always searching. And rather interestingly, in all of these retreat journeys, I've always gone to confession. I've always gone to the sacrament. Now, most of the time, it has been very refreshing and renewing. Occasionally, I have met a false god, a rigid or... Uh, overbearing, legalistic uh, confessor, but that was rare. Most of the times I've gone to confession on my pilgrimages, I have experienced in a new way a deeper understanding of God's love. The pilgrim is one who is searching, and this Christmas is a time for the pilgrim. It's a time to experience the openness. It's not the words that the church gives. It's the space between the words. It's the hospitality. It's the openness. It's the blessing. It's the caring. It's the touching of God's love. That's the yearning of the pilgrim. The pilgrim is always looking for something deeper. I remember some years ago, with a small group, we went on the Santiago de Compostela. When I got to Compostela, spent two days there, and uh, my biggest challenge was to find a priest that spoke English. 
seems to me like every place I went to confession in this church, that church, priest didn't speak any English. Finally, I found a priest that speaks English. And when I did, I entered into the spaces between the words. I want you to keep that in mind in your family. It's not the words. It's the human experience. And our great prayer, of course, for the church is, it's not what the church says. It's not the proclamation the church makes. It's the experience of the spaces between the words. And the great prayer at Holy Family, and maybe something we yearn from universally, is to be accepted. Oh, to be accepted just as you are. In the confessional moment to find that in your humanity you are loved, you are cherished, and you are blessed. Not in your perfection, but in your humanity. That's what it means to understand the Torah. And that's what it means to understand the Word of God which we proclaim. That's what it means to understand the teaching of the Church, the teaching of the Messiah who came to affirm us in our humanity, to love us in our brokenness, to admire us in our failure, to call us to a new life, to become a pilgrim, a person filled with faith, confident that when the Lord leads us, we are led to a new and wonderful experience of God's infinite love. So whoever you are, wherever you are in your life, know that God is present to you in that space. It makes Christmas meaningful, it makes the birth of Jesus Christ into our lives something to celebrate and to give thanks, not because we're perfect, but precisely because we are not perfect. That's the whole meaning of the birth of Jesus Christ. He's born into our humanity to touch us, to love us, to affirm us, to encourage us, to lift up our spirits and to believe that this is a day of celebration. It's a day of gratitude. It's a day of praise because God, the infinite God, has become human, born in Bethlehem. So in some ways, every one of us is called to Bethlehem. It's a long journey sometimes. It requires sacrifice. It requires determination. And most of all, it requires faith. The pilgrim is somebody who is confident, strong in spirit, the one who believes, and believing is seeing. So keep that in mind for all the expressions we have given at Christmas, for all the cards we have sent, and the gifts we have shared, the only meaning they have, my friend, is found in the spaces between the words. That's a holy place. That's a place in which we truly enter into prayer and experience the wonder of God's presence in our humanity. Amen.
Gather with me now as we profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the shared faith, we gather to celebrate the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. We now offer our prayers for the needs of the whole world and for those whom we love. For the church, that all who are called to leadership may be filled with the Holy Spirit and joyously proclaim the coming of the Savior with their words and with their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world and its leaders, that our celebration of the Prince of Peace may inspire a new birth of justice and peace for all people, especially those struggling to survive in places scarred by violence and unrest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us on this holy day that, drawn into the mystery of God's love, we may sing God's glory with the angels and rejoice with the shepherds to have found the one for whom we've been waiting. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer, the hungry, the homeless, the unemployed, the sick, and the dying, and all whose names are on our Holy Family prayer wall, including Reed Oliver, Hermione Lees, Camille Tessatore Stark, Cinny Lewis, Elenia Garcia, Andrea Soto, Kay Lyman, and Janice Webster that he who came to share their poverty and pain may enfold them in his healing life, love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Vito Colonna, Marilyn Gonzalez, mother of Joseph Gonzalez, Barbara Chandler, mother of Donald Chandler, Martha Gurgley, mother of Suzanne Gurgley, Mary Navarro Howie, sister of Lenore Navarro Dowling, Hans Albers, Anthony Lacco, father of John Lacco and grandfather of Kelly and Catherine Lacco, Patricia Bannon Isaacson, cousin of Teresa Nally and Martin Pacheco, and all who have died alone and afraid, that they may be born to eternal life and gathered into God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for the quiet prayers we bring to the, manager, to the manger today, that they will be heard and answered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we want to draw into our prayer all the pilgrim people who belong to us, but somehow they feel separated. Perhaps we don't share a common belief. There's some impediment, some struggle, but we pray for your belonging, for the diversity of pilgrims, that during these holy days you will find a place of welcome and hospitality to reflect in truth and in faith the birth of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Lord and Savior for each and every one of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, hear the prayers of your people. May we who celebrate on earth the mystery of your coming one day rejoice in your presence in heaven. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 sisters and brothers, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the holy church. Spirit of God, renew our faith, the deep and profound assurance that we are your people, we are loved, and redeemed in unmerited grace by your infinite love. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we see God made visible in the birth of Christ, we may be caught up to in the love of all things 
mysterious and invisible. And so with all the choirs of angels, we sing our unending hymn of praise. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Let your Spirit come upon these gifts like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time of his betrayal. As he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once again gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we despair and drink this cup, we Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that sharing of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Make us grow in the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all women and men who serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. We now gather as one family in prayer as Jesus taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all distress as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Pause with me now. Dwell in the place, the space between the words. It's a time of peace. It's a time of goodwill. A time of forgiveness. It's a time of sharing. It's a time of peace. Be strengthened. Be uplifted. Be confident in the peace of Christ dwelling within us. This is Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Savior of the world, the one sent to us to touch us in our lives with new hope and a renewed faith. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy are we called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, should enter she under my roof. Only say, say the word, word my soul shall, shall be healed. Make this day holy in spiritual communion now. Breathe in, breathe in the presence of Christ. Feel the presence of Christ in your life. Enlighten this day. Make this day holy by our awareness of Jesus Christ within us in spiritual communion.
Let us pray. Father, the child born today is the Savior of the world. He made us your children. May he welcome us into your kingdom where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Pause for a moment now and pray with me this blessing. When he came among us as man, the Son of God scattered the darkness of this world and filled this holy day with his glory. May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your hearts with holiness. Together we pray. Amen. Amen. God sent his angels to shepherds to herald the great joy of our Savior's birth. May he fill you with joy and make you heralds of his gospel. Together we pray. Amen. Amen. When the word became man, earth was joined to heaven. May he give you his peace and goodwill and a fellowship with all the heavenly hosts. Together we pray. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you very much, Mike, for our sacristan and Lauren, our reader, to Tony and to Kate and to Steve, for, and to all those who are in our video ministry who very quietly but with great dedication and with great generosity, make these uh, live streaming masses possible. In behalf of Cambria Tortorelli and Father Dennis and the whole staff of Holy Family, I bless you with greetings of great joy. May this be a wonderful day of grace and belonging for you. May God present go in peace now to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.